Welcome to the AP Physics video lecture. This is going to be covering the centripetal force in the horizontal direction. This is a classic example of a problem that you're going to see for centripetal force in the horizontal direction. Estimate the force a person must exert on a string attached to a 0.5 kilogram ball to make the ball revolve in a, cir in a horizontal circle of a radius 0.25 meters. The ball makes five revolutions per second. Ignore the string's mass. The first thing that we have to do is draw a free body diagram. If we look at it from the side, we would see that first of all, we treat the object as a circle. And then there is a force going in towards the center of the circle. And that is going to be the force center, the force tension. Then there is a force going down force gravity, M, um, G. Okay. Now, it asks us to solve for the force of the tension. What arises here is understanding what is actually causing the force to revolve around the circle. Is gravity contributing to the centripetal force? No, it's not. This is only in the horse it's only in the vertical direction. The only force that is acting on the horizontal direction is the force tension. So you can write the force centripetal or FR or FC is equal to the force of the tension. This is the only force that is in the horizontal direction. There's no minus mg here. There isn't. So make the substitution as likewise. And we know that AC is equal to V squared over R. The question asks for the, um, the force of tension. So you're solving for T. To solve for T, you need M, V, V, and R. You have R, you just need to know what V is. We can get V from using the 2 pi R over the period. This is the velocity. The object travels 2 pi R, the radius is 0 0.25, and the period, or the time, it takes to complete one revolution is 0 0.25. 0 0.20 seconds. How did I get that? Well, the period is equal to 1 over the frequency. And the frequency here is 5 revolutions per second. So the period t is equal to 1 divided by 5. And in decimal form, it is 0 0.20. After we plug it in, you should get that the force tension here is 123.4 newtons. This is the tension required for the object to be swung in a circular path. Now you might be wondering, why do we ignore the force gravity? In the textbook, it has a really good line that explains that. It is the same scenario here. It says, the ball's weight complicates matter, and it makes it impossible to revolve a ball with the coordinate perfectly horizontal. We estimate the force assuming that the weight is small and letting phi, which is this angle measurement, equal to zero. That means that this phi is perfectly zero. That means it's perfectly horizontal. The force tension is perpendicular to the force gravity. And in this case, you can set this up like what we did before, how it is only acting in the horizontal direction. If there is a theta, if there's a phi here, things get complicated. That is the reason why we assume it to be infinitely small and, om and ex almost to zero. And also we treat that, that the weight is small enough for us to make this approximation. 
A typical question where this could be asked in the multiple choice is asking, what is the source of the centripetal acceleration in this problem? The correct answer would just be the force tension. It is not force gravity. It is nothing else. The only source of centripetal acceleration in the problem is right here, force tension. Here it's an experimental design. He sues wants to design an experiment to determine the tension of a, str of a string when he spins it in a circle. Three things you need to do. What material does he need? What data should he collect? And what is the, proce what is the procedure? This acts like our last problem. What I decided to do is get the value information. The other stuff I just ignore. You're mostly looking just for the important nouns in the question. 0 0.5 kilogram ball, radius of 0 0.25 meters, the ball, five revolutions per second, ignoring the spring's mass. So step one, what material does he need? You could try to do it, okay, if you have lab experience. But the way I approach it is looking at the math. So I do step two first. What data should he collect? And we already know from our f previous problem that we know that the force centripetal is only supplied by the force tension. You should see how I got this equation from the last problem. And remember how we got V? It was 2 pi R over T. When you want to collect data and graph it, you need an input and an output. The input here is what you're going to change. And the output is what you're going to measure. And in this case, we want to know the tension. So the tension is going to be what we um, get as a result of plugging the values. And the revolution is actually what we're going to change. So this should help you out. Now, if we look at the math, we could get a list of our supplies, a mass here. And the fact that mass is constant, we only need one mass. It could, do, it could be anything we want. Next, we have R and R here. And R is your radius, okay? Why did I put different string lengths? It's because that is part of the revolution. The revolution is what we are changing. The fact that we are changing it, we need different string lengths. The fact that this is a length, you need a tool to measure its length. Therefore, I use a meter stick. Lastly, you have T here, which is the revolution, uh, which is the period. And we know we can get um, the period from doing one over the frequency. And this are all time units. Hence why you need the timer. Notice the way I get the material is from the math equation. Each one of the important variables gives you what mass you need. The hard part here is writing the procedure. I wrote the, the math of what I need, and I saw that I have to change the revolution and the tension. So step one, attach the mass to the string. Step two, you swing the mass in a circle and measure how many times it goes in one second, in 10 seconds. Why did I use 10 seconds here? Well, if you try to use one second, will your object complete a revolution in one second? No. That's why I do it in 10 seconds. After that, you want to divide the total amount of revolutions by 10 seconds. This is to get the period and the frequency. You could do it by 5 seconds. You could do it by 20 seconds. It doesn't matter. I use 10 seconds because it's a very even number. Okay, This could give me the T that I am looking for. Now, I want to repeat step A and step C with the same string length to reduce the error. You could do it how many times you want, but I use five times. You could write 10, 20, it doesn't matter. 
The AP physics people want you to make sure that you write a uh, write a step that says you have to do it multiple times and you're going to use the average value for the trials. This helps this part helps reduce error. Okay. Now, you want to repeat this process again with different string lengths because like a, like what we are doing, we are changing the revolution because our radius changes right you could have one that is 0 0.5 centimeters then you could have one that is one centimeter then you could have one that is two centimeters each one of these are all different r's therefore they're going to have different revolutions different periods step d and e are written just to reduce error in the experimental design okay as you repeat multiple trials the standard deviation is going to decrease the variance between the data is going to decrease giving you a better measurement of the expected value now this is another example of how you can see centripetal force in the horizontal direction this is a tetherball there are forces acting on this object there is a force that's pushing it down, which is force gravity. And there is a force that travels along the length of the string. That is your force tension, T. That's it. This is a free body diagram for this scenario. Okay, do not draw the components, right? Let's look at this example. This is like the tetherball example. Force gravity is pulling it down, and there's a tension force that is going diagonally that's on the length of the string. It says here, a 200 gram mass is attached to one end of a string of length 80 centimeters. The other end of the string is tied to a fixed point on the ceiling. The apparatus is set in motion so the mass move in a circular path and the string traces out in a cone. A cone is referred to this. This is a cone. Okay, and it completes a cone. That means the object doesn't move up or down. It completes this cone completely horizontal. Some things that you have to notice. The question is asking you for the tension in the string. So that is um, F of T. Please notice that the tension here is split into two parts. The horizontal, which is the tension in the Y direction, and the vertical. Sorry, the vertical, which is the tension in the y direction, and the horizontal, which is the tension in the x direction. If we do the summation of the forces, of the centripetal force, it's going to be equal to, you can do it any way you want. Um, in this case, I'm going to do the, horizon uh, the uh, ho uh, vertical which is just going to be force tension and minus in the y direction minus force gravity and we know that this object doesn't move up or down so this equals to zero this is when we look at it vertically okay. equals to ty minus fg if you add fg to both sides you're going to get this step I just showed all the math so you could get to this point. The tension force in the y direction is equal to the force of gravity. Make the substitution. How did I get that? Well, theta is right here. Okay, This is the right triangle. The adjacent, which is this, is going to be the cosine part. Hence why this is Ty cosine theta. The horizontal is the opposite part. So that's going to be the sine. Plug it in. Solve for T. You should get at 2.26 newtons. Notice that the tension in the string here, we use the vertical part to look at it. But now, part C it asks us to find the tangential speed of this mass. Now, 
it's the tangential speed so we are looking for the force centripetal so therefore we're going to have to look at the horizontal direction we know that the only force that is supplying the tangential speed that is supplying the centripetal acceleration that is supplying the centripetal force is the tension force in the x direction okay if you want to see how this got here we saw summation of fc is equal to here it's just t um, it's equal to tx that's it make make the substitution okay tx here if you're wondering like what i said before this is the opposite so this is going to be the sine part okay sine theta part that's how i got tx is equal to t sine theta the question is this what is the radius well the radius exists right here on this length correct therefore you could actually get it by using the sine so the length here the radius is length of the string sine theta because again it is in the horizontal direction plug it in you can get its velocity there you go okay please understand that the previous problem we saw for tension using the vertical part now when we are looking for the tangential speed we are referring to the centripetal acceleration we use the horizontal part next you already see in this scenario but now this is the way it's asked on the AP physics exam this is an, an example question of the 2020 example question this is a free response this is a argumentation part it says the student one's rationale is none of the forces exerted on the sphere are in the direction of, of point C in the center of the circular path. Therefore, I don't see how there can be a centripetal force exerted on the sphere to make it move in a circle. So the A, what is one aspect of students one reasoning that is incorrect? Explain why. Well, that part is wrong. The reason why that part is wrong is because the horizontal part of tension is actually pointing in the direction of C. We saw it right here. T of X is pointing towards the center. This part is also wrong because the horizontal part of tension is actually supplying the centripetal force here. And we saw that right there. The centripetal force is equal to FT, which is the force of tension sine theta. Student two says, I see another problem. The tension force exerted by the string is at an angle from the vertical. Therefore, its vertical component must be less than the weight mg of the sphere. This means the net force on the sphere has a downward direction component and the sphere should be moving downwards as well as moving in the circle. Mm. If you did the scenario, all right, you see that it traces a perfect cone. That should give you an intuition. That part is wrong. The vertical component must be less than the weight of gravity. No. The vertical part of tension has to be equal in magnitude the force of gravity on the sphere because the sphere doesn't move up or down. You should see in the free body diagram here, Ty is the same length as force gravity because these two balance out. And we saw the fact that they do balance out. We're allowed to set up this equation. What's also wrong is that part. The sphere moves in a circular horizontal path. It doesn't go downwards. All right, so there you go. And these are how um, you look at the, centrip the centripetal force in the horizontal direction.